Hello, we've relocated several hundred kilometres south for stage seven of the tour. This is Chateau Roux, or Chateau Raoul as it originally was, having been named after the 10th century castle built here by the rather wonderfully named Raoul the Large. Sounds like the perfect historical role for Gerard Depardieu, who's the town's other claim to fame, having been born here. In cycling terms, though, this isn't so much a chateau as a set of foundations, the ones on which Mark Cavendish is building perhaps the greatest sprinting career of all time. And today he's looking for Tour de France stage win number 17 on the same home straight where he got number one. Mark Cavendish is bursting out of the brand. He's had to make a run very early here. He's challenged by the sprinters. Look at the speed of Mark Cavendish here. As we get the shot, he's wiped out the champion. Mark Cavendish, the youngest British rider ever to get a stage win in the Tour de France. You're not a sentimentalist, are you? It doesn't I am a sentimentalist, actually. Go on, then. I mean, describe that day, because the sun was out, it was... That was incredible, you know. Break went early on, and uh, we controlled it. And we had the green jersey, we had the white jersey with Tommy and Kim. And, but we were one line, even with those guys in it. It didn't matter what colour they had on, they were... They ran for me, kept it strung out the end. Team Colombia have got hold of the Tour de France by the scruff of the racing shorts and have put all of the team on the front. It's all for Mark Cavendish right now. We didn't catch Vaughan D until 100 metres to go actually in the sprint so it was time, one time perfect but we got it and the guys led me out. Gerard Sielek took me from about sixth wheel with about 400 to go. 200, that could go a bit earlier, 250, 300 metres to go because uh, I could see Vaughan and I used his slipstream to get to get the speed and passed him and uh, and won. And I covered my head in disbelief. I yeah. won a stage of the Tour de France. Yeah. It was incredible, you know. Uh, the first stage of the Tour for any rider is a is a massive thing, and uh, to revisit that place will be special for me. I knew I could do it. I'd said in the press conference before the Tour, I, I, I want to win the stage. Yeah. The team had ridden with nine guys there for me to do it but still like when it hits you when you cross the line it's a uh, it can define any person's career you know and, uh, and it probably just started right? well that was absolutely superb he really is the fastest rider over 200 meters the first to fall that year I had no idea I'd be able to do four on one one tour you know where uh, yeah it's how it is it's irrelevant if I win one every year I'm happy but we'll try and win as many as possible. I'm incredibly lucky that I have such a strong team, such a committed team to me. Guys that will, will ride, ride themselves on the ground for me, you know, and uh, that's probably the biggest reason why I've won so many, you know. So my name's on the list of winning, but it's due to some incredible people around me who will commit day in, day out to, to put me in that position. Well, today's couldn't be more of a sprinter stage, 218 kilometres from Le Mans to Chateau Roux, and flat all the way between them. One of only two open road stages on the race, in fact, with no categorised climbs at all, the other being the final day in Paris. The intermediate sprint is intriguingly placed, just 25 kilometres from the end, but it's the final sprint we're focusing on today, and the same, I suspect, goes for everyone else. Now, everyone in race terms was down to 192 at the start this morning. Vasil Kirienka of Movistar came in outside the time limit yesterday and got eliminated. There's the top of the yellow jersey classification. Tourusoft with Cadell Evans on his shoulder, one second back. Frank Schleck third, David Miller fourth, Andreas Clurden fifth. And a sky 678 of Brad Wiggins, Geraint Thomas and Edvald Bersenhagen, yesterday's stage winner. They're all within 12 seconds, so is Andy Schlech. And Alberto Contador, the defending champion, is at a minute 42. We're going to start to see some very high speeds now, because there, oh, there's another crash that's a race radio there's telling me it's a crash. crash. I'm yep. I don't know whether our pictures are going to give us them, but there's a crash, but here it is. Well, that... Oh, dear. Coppel has gone down. Well, uh, this was at the back. There's uh, Sylvain Chavanel uh, just having a quick look to see if any of the big leaders have been caught out. Well, I was just about to say the race is currently picking up a very strong cross tailwind, and that's going to be uh, a reason for the main field to push the speeds up higher and above 50, 55 kilometers an hour. Right down. Bradley. Wiggins has gone down and he's involved in that okay. crash somewhere. I can't see him on the ground there, but that is not too good for him. 
Boshin Hagen has gone down as well. And I'm, I'm picking this up from Race Radio, which is crackling in my ear. That's Wiggins in the middle, and he does not look very good at all, Wiggins. He's got a teammate alongside him, pushing off number 54 there. That's Tyler Farah, the sprinter from uh, Team uh, Garmin Cervelo. Well, that Crash happened right up at the front end of the pack, waiting there for uh, Bradley Wiggins at the side of the road as his teammate. They're pushing off uh, one of the riders from Katusha. Well, the chaos, it can happen any time, uh, any moment. Uh, these riders have stopped at the side of the road. They're waiting for Bradley Wiggins. He's checking himself out. He is in the white jersey. The man alongside him there, just having a quick look. That's uh, Bozen Hagen. Also there, Juan Antonio Fletcher. This is a bad moment. They're checking out Bradley Wiggins. He looks so good so far. Race Doctor just checking him out. Well, Doctor will check him out. Probably he's got three teammates up alongside him. And certainly, the, the, the first thing the doctors always check, and it's the, the first thing really, there's two big injuries that happen to a bike rider. First of all, it's the collarbone that can get popped when you land on your hands and it can go over, taking him to the side of the road. The other thing is a small bone in the hand, the scapula. Chris Horner has gone down as well. Well, this is uh, this is not good for Team Radio Shack, and this will be the tour, which is... Be oh, dear me. Oh, dear me. This looks as if uh, this is going to be the end of the Tour de France for Bradley Wiggins. He is in... he's in agony there. Well, the pictures aren't good, Paul, are they? Bradley Wiggins has been taken to the side of the road there, and the ambulance has been called up. It looks like the end of the line for Bradley. That is terrible. Well, now, they, it looks to me as if uh, HTC High Road are going to take this quite seriously because they are all over the front. One, two, three, four riders leading out Mark Cavendish in fifth place. Rojas is right on his wheel, coming up the outside in the green jersey. Philippe Gilbert is going to bar barge and bounce a little bit. He wants to try and get himself onto the wheel of Mark Cavendish. Don't do that too often, Philippe, because these boys are much more experimented sprinters than you might be. Well, just take a look as the missile warms up for the finish, perhaps, because he knows his arch-rival Tyler Farrah is not in this group he's looking so he's sprinting on one leg mark cavendish as he comes up towards the line here no sir it's not mark that's why this is mark cavendish as he comes up towards the line he takes it rock has is there and he gets i think he might have claimed the green jersey there paul because i think that gilbert finished two places behind him well and all now dies down for the sprint fill yes there you can see mark renshaw the renshaw, lead out man for uh, cavendish cavendish are looking at the finish the line down the middle straight sprint for him he's not really trying here phil i don't think he pushed himself too hard and that's why he came out of the pack on this occasion to get himself those points 11 points in the bag and yes two positions separating rojas from gilbert it's a question of the finish line now because rojas has jumped over gilbert in that standing so the one point deficit now the one point advantage for rojas and he'll look to try and build on that at the finishing line and get his jersey back which he's loaned to philippe gilbert and the group that's chasing behind is 80 strong paul there's 80 riders in the tour de france were somehow involved in that crash which kept them by the roadside team sky try their best here to keep this race under pressure Boyson Hagen and uh, Gra and uh, Geran thomas are the big losers in this group at the moment but I'm so sad to say that the big loser today is Bradley Wiggins, the British champion who's crashed out with a suspected broken collarbone in a massive pileup, which is fourth 80 riders here to try and catch up with the race. Yeah, Bradley Wiggins, we watched him uh, early on in the season uh, be uh, very dominant in the Criterium de Dauphine. What's this at the side of the road? This is Levi Leipheimer, again, a mechanical incident. It's a back wheel, flat tyre, taking his it? time to take it out. When, when Lady Luck leaves you, Phil, she really does do a runner. But HTC High Road now are being challenged by Leopard Trek in the middle. You've got the lines of all of these riders trying to get the organization going. There's a line of riders from Team Katusha on the right-hand side, and they've got a great new sprinter, a young rider, Galimizianov, and he could create the surprise. Round the chicane, oh my watch out for the traffic furnace. She's spinning it up, putting it back together. Thank heavens they're seeing what's going on here as they continue to drive this race on now. We're running into the last four kilometers of the day. And the, t uh, the gap is 2.14 to the chasers behind now. Now it's Peter Velitz's turn at the front. 
They're slowly but surely using up the soldiers here. The last man is expected to deliver. It is a long 1.6 kilometre finishing straight after a sharp turn into it. Phil, that last kilometre between five kilometres to go and four kilometres to go was covered in 60 seconds. That's 60 kilometres an hour, just inside of 40 miles an hour. We haven't even hit the acceleration for the sprint yet. Well, the crowd now in Chateauroux are watching the arrival of the lead peloton in the Tour de France. They're going to see a second race coming in in about two minutes and 17 seconds. Peter Velitz has done his job. He's got nothing left in the gas tank now. He swings off, but there are still six riders from... HTC High Road at the front. Number six in the line will be Mark Cavendish. Cavendish's wheel is covered at the back by Alessandro Pataki. Just behind Pataki, Jose Joachim Rojas. But the boys have still got plenty of firepower. Velitz hasn't gone to the backfield. He's he did a big back. turn at the front and <laughs> he swung in to get behind the wheel of Bernie Eisel. They want the firepower with them for as long as possible. Renshaw is just in front of Cavendish. In front of Renshaw is Goss. And then Bernie Eisel today has said, I'm going to do the long one at the front today, boys. I think we are seeing the perfect lead-out train in operation at the moment. Mark Cavendish is the last man in white in the long straight line. Just in front is the rider from Bathurst in New South Wales. That is a Mark Renshaw. Everybody says he's the fastest man and he could win for himself, but he loves to lead out, Mark. That's his job. Watch the location of the green jersey of Philippe Gilbert and the yellow jersey of Tor Hushop. When we finished here in 2008 and Mark Cavendish won, Tor Hushop was the next best of the riders who are competing in the race today. He finished in fourth. Bernie Eisel on the front, in front of Peter Velitz, then uh, right up there as well. Still in reserve, hasn't really turned the gas tank on yet. Tony Martin, they're now, Phil, inside of two kilometres. There's only one corner left. It's a right-hand sweeping bend, and then it's 1.5 kilometres. Straight line down to the finish here in Chateau Roux. Huge, huge effort by Bernie to make sure nobody could move up the peloton there, but he's sold his engine, and he's dropped to the back. This is the sweeper. Now they will actually soon see the finishing line if they've got great eyesight it's a mile in front of them uh, but once they get under that one kilometer to go it is dead visible in a long straight line look at the width of this road look at tony martin this man can win an individual time trial he's a challenger possibly for a high finish in the tour de france but today those thoughts are not in his mind his thoughts are make sure you keep the pace nice and high we don't want any challenge to come from the other sprinters like gilbert like greipel like tor hushoft in the yellow jersey over to the right hand side they're going to keep this pace nice and high and fill as they come inside the final kilometer they have still got the firepower on this race 55 seconds for that final kilometer andre Greipel Greipel is right up there, and wouldn't he like to beat Mark Cavendish, but he's a long way back. Well, they've got to watch out for this Russian sprinter, Denis Glanizhamov, because he is there, he's in fifth or sixth wheel, and that's the guy flicking his arm. He's a newcomer to the Tour de France, he's a fast finisher now. The yellow jersey of Hushoth is brilliantly placed, he's not pushing it, but he's waiting and watching. And now we're getting down to the final run, we've got two riders left before it's Cavendish's turn to go. And everybody, look at them, are scrambling to grab the back wheel of Mark Cavendish. Roman Feyu has come up through the inside there, he's ducking and diving Ooh. like a man possessed. Gossing now started the sprint, he swings off, he's now up to Mark Renshaw, still locked into position there is Mark Cavendish, he's waiting for the moment to this is the launch for the line of the missile as Renshaw has said okay it's down to you Mark Mark is now having to go for a long sprint but what's the left of the road that's Greipel on the left of the road Cavendish grips his teeth but Cavendish gets it Greipel will be in second place Ali Jet on the right was will be in third Mark Cavendish relives his youth he won here in 2008 and he's come back and he's won again and that now is stage win number 17 in history Phil, let's have a look at this because this is textbook. This is from the handbook, absolutely perfect. Matty Goss set him up with 350 metres to go, pulls out. Look at the acceleration of Greipel on the right-hand side. You can just see that's a great move by him. All of a sudden, Cavendish says, thanks, Mark. I'm coming up now to try and get myself in and out of the way there. He must have been surprised by the acceleration of Greipel, his former teammate, now an adversary, but this is the moment. Cavendish has got the afterburners glowing here, throws it to the line, no contest. Uh, Alessandro Pataki is up there looking pretty good. It's second, oh, I don't know, second or third for Greipel and Pataki. And Felu right in there in fourth.
Well, let's clear up the order behind Cavendish. It was Alessandro Pataki who'd taken Cav's wheel ahead of Andre Greipel, who'd gone on his own up the right-hand side. Then Fayou, William Bonnet, Denis Galimzianov, Tuusoft and Sebastian Turgot. Those eight were part of a group of 80 riders who were all given the same time. Both the Schlecks were in there, so was David Miller, Cadell Evans, Alberto Contador, Robert Hazink and Ivan Basso. Three minutes and six seconds later, another group of 80 rolled in, the one created by the big crash. And in there was Geraint Thomas, knowing that in waiting for Bradley Wiggins, he'd lost his white jersey. And there were plenty of other big names in there with him. Ryder Hagerdahl, Edvard Burson Hagen, Ben Swift, Roman Kreuziger, Levi Leipheimer, Tyler Farrer and Chris Horner. 